Um, can you, can any, can everybody see it? Wait, uh, okay. So I'm gonna start, okay, uh, yeah, here. I'm gonna put this in presentation mode and I guess I'm, I'm gonna start. So first, <clears throat> there's two parts to this class. I'm gonna say that and then where I'm gonna talk about like an introduction to forensics, what is forensics, and then I'm gonna, and then like what's gonna be in this class. So before I get like any, before I actually get to this class, I just wanna know, um, like this, it's just a quick practice problem. Uh, you, it doesn't really have anything to do with forensics except for the crime solving. So what there is, is here you have a investigation basically where it's a cri uh, crime scene where one day after recess, your class pet, Ronald McDonald the guinea pig, turns up missing. Your teacher, Mrs. Brown, assigns you to find out who stole the precious class pet. Information about your uh, for what is forensics, I will get to that after this, right after. Um, information about your classmates and the crime scene will be detailed on the next slide. So the suspects, you have Liam Johnson. He is your least favorite classmate and he wants Rick Ronald McDonald. This morning, he was bragging about getting potato chips and strawberry jello for lunch, but he never showed up to the cafeteria. Second suspect, you have Fan Yi Li. She is a student from the classroom next to yours. She regularly comes to your classroom to look at and oh sorry that's a typo pet ronald mcdonald she had pretzels for snack today carson smith he is a classmate that really likes ronald mcdonald and he says that guinea pigs are his favorite animal he had Chex mix for snack and a peanut butter jelly sandwich for lunch so for evidence there are some things that in ronald mcdonald's cage that shouldn't have been there so traces of a red gelatinous substance that smelled like artificial strawberries and crispy yellowish crumbs with lots of salt. So I'm going to give you guys about, it should take only like 30 seconds to solve. And if you can just uh, type it in chat or what you, who you think stole Ronald McDonald. Yeah, uh, I'll just uh, go to the suspects. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you guys are correct. It was Liam because he was talking about strawberry jello and pota getting potato chips. So now that we've gotten that over, we're gonna, for an overview, this was in the kind of sign up thing just today, we'll be going over an introduction to forensics and we're gonna be going over fingerprints, two, blood stain and firearm analysis, week three, fiber and hair analysis, and week four, we're gonna have a mock investigation. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip through the icebreakers because this is a uh, webinar. Okay, so first of all, what is forensic science? And I know one of you guys asked this um, in chat. So what forensics for this is a straight definition is the application of science to criminal and civil laws. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to, oh, sorry, you're going to identify things and what, and like identify and find uh, the crime or the criminal in when you see a crime scene. So a couple questions. What do you know about forensics and what are what is are the first things that you think of when you hear the word forensics? And if you could just type that into the chat box. Yeah, yeah, science to solve crimes and mystery. You guys are all correct. Uh, those are pretty good kind of overviews of forensics. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get to part two. We're I'm kind of running late on time because I was late, sorry. Okay, yeah, Sherlock Holmes, crime solving. Those are all really, really good uh, things to think of when you think forensics. Okay, so first, now we're going to talk about fingerprints and some basic things about fingerprints. You would know that there's minutiae, which are these ridge characteristics. So I have a picture right here and you can see that there's little kind of patterns, as you can see over here, like for an example, Delta, do you see, you see this um, triangle thing that is called a Delta? And if you guys 
um, you know, in landforms, there's a delta. It kind of is one thing that splits out into two. That's how I remember that this is a delta. And then bifurcations to like one thing that splits in two islands. There's a lot more, but those are just a couple. And a fingerprint, everybody has different fingerprints. And the patterns on the fingerprints are formed by ridges. So if you want to know, ridges are these things that you can see right here, like the little lines. Okay. Um, okay, so the three main types of fingerprints are loops, whorls, and arches. So loops, they're these fingerprints that go up and down, and then they curve down to make a loop. So these... I don't, I mean, I would just think that there's loops. There's no really way to, I would say, to remember them, but like loops go up and down. Yeah. So over here, I have a picture and you can see like it highlights the uh, way that the ridge characteristics point, like the ridges go. So basically when you look for these, you see if the ridges point in one specific way, it's not just going to be one line. It's all of the lines go like that. Um, these are the most common. They're 65% of all of the fingerprints. And then next I have whorls. And these are fingerprints that look like kind of a spiral thing or concentric circles. As you can see over here, it's also highlighted. And um, they go kind of like swirling whorls. These are second most common, they're 30% of all fingerprints. I would say when thinking about these, think circles. And then lastly, these are the least common. These are arches. So they form kind of a hill or a mountain. These are only 5%. Oh, yeah, um, when you can only see whorls, a lot of people, well, each fingerprint will be different. Like I have a couple loops and whorls. If you see only whorls, you know, it's pretty common, but it's not, and then, but I have a couple of loops and whorls. I don't have any arches, but yeah, these are, these are the arches and sometimes they go look like a tent. Some kind times look, they look like a mountain. Okay. So now I'm going to go more in depth into loops. So these are, there's two kinds of loops. Um, so the plain loops, so these these are the ones shown over here. These are plain loops. And they only, they usually, if they, there is a delta, there's only one. And as you can see right here, that's the delta. And they go straight up and down. They can be separated into two ulnar loops and radial loops. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the bone structure in your hand or in your arm, but basically the loops for the, Ulnar loops, the, these go into the direction of the ulna because, or the pinky, because your ulna is on the side of your pinky. And then other one, the other one is radial loops, where these go in the direction of the thumb or the radius, because the, ra the radius is on that side. Um, as if that doesn't, okay, so the ridges point in that direction. If that doesn't really make sense, I have a picture right here where you can see a little image of a loop and it points down and like over here, it points down towards the thumb. And one thing to note that is that if you, you can't ha take a picture like just like this, you don't know which hand it is on. You can't just take a picture like this and see, oh, is it, it's a radial loop or it's an ulnar loop because you don't know which hand it's on and it changes depending on the hand. It's like over here, it's, this fingerprint where it's pointing this way, this is a radial loop, but on the other hand, it is an ulnar loop. Okay, so now whorls. There's a lot more of these. Um, so these are central pocket whorls, and I, it's like a loop with a whorl at the end. You can kind of think of it, for me, I like to identify these as kind of like a peacock feather um or a magnifying glass because it has like kind of like a stick and a circle at the end and then next there's double loop whorls and these kind of form an s shape but they can go in any direction you don't they don't have to be 
like this one, which forms a perfect perfect S. I don't know. I think there might be another example of them, but basically it just goes in the shape of an S. It could be at any angle. And then next, plane worlds. These are concentric circles. I would say that when you look at your fingerprints, you would probably see mostly plane worlds. And lastly, there's accidental worlds where these are any weird shape. Like this one looks like a mushroom. It doesn't fit into any of these. Um, and yeah, there's basically what I would say would be an accidental world is if you cannot identify it, then it is most likely a accidental world. Okay, lastly, we have arches. Um, these are the ones that I said they look like mountains and oh, uh, wait, Chase, which one is spelled wrong? I might have made a typo. But okay, I'm just gonna continue. Um, yeah, these are the ones that looked like oh, world. Oh, Oh, no, in fingerprints, it's spelled world with an O. Basically, uh, yeah. Um, for plain arches, arches that they don't have a delta underneath, these are um, like plain. They don't, they don't really look like mountains. I, how do you get fingerprints? Like, how do you collect them? And these ones look more like hills, but... What do you mean by how do you, how do I collect? Well, how do I get fingerprints? Um, uh, I'll get back to that. So these look more like hills and you can notice that the top is, oh yeah, you were, yes, you were born with fingerprints. They form, I can't exactly remember which stage um, of like, you as a, I guess, like a fetus got your fingerprints, but yeah, you were born with fingerprints. Oh, and yeah, why people have fingerprints? I would say it's mostly because like they uh, give you some kind of friction and you can grip things because you have like little ridges into your fingers. Okay, so, and then there's tented arches. These look kind of like a tent. That's why they're called tented arches. And you can see that there is a delta right here. Um, they're more like mountains. They're sharper at the top. And I think they're pretty different. So between these two, it's pretty easy to tell. Okay, now I have some practice problems. Um, I'm guessing you can see this. So just like, um, when you guys answer this, I, th I don't know if you guys can um, specifically go type to, I guess, send a chat message to panelists only and just put your, the one for 1A at the beginning and so just uh, for the practice problems. I pro I'm probably going to give maybe five-ish minutes. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm going to set a timer for five minutes and once this gets off, I'll explain. Okay, um, I think a lot more uh, answers are coming in, so I'm just going to cancel the timer because I think you guys are a lot faster than I thought you guys would be. But for number one, this is a whirl. And B, you can tell this is a central pocket whirl, so, which was the first um, one that we talked about. So this one is like um, 
there's the whirl right here, but then you can also see there's like a loop coming off of it. So like a loop whirl hybrid. And again, this kind of looks like a peacock feather or a magnifying glass. For number two, what fingerprint is is the rarest? This these are arches, and there's like five percent of, or yeah, like five percent of all fingerprints are arches. And for B, how many variations of this fingerprint are there? There are two. So plain arch, which is the one without the delta, flatter top, you know, and then the other one is tented arch with delta sharper top more like kind of like a 10. okay so now these are the types of fingerprints that you are found that are found with at a crime scene so there's latent patent and plastic fingerprints now first you have latent which are traces of sweat oil etc these are not visible to the naked eye i mean sometimes if you press your finger like on a on glass and your fingerprints like really oily and like take a say like a glass cup and then you shine it to the light you can kind of see it but it's not very easily seen next you have oh for naked eye basically that means without like a microscope without doing anything to the uh to the last oh, to the pink fingerprint yeah so uh, yeah, seeing without any uh, kind of device, that's completely correct. Um, yeah, so next we have patent. These are visible images of fingerprints left on a surface by paint, oil, blood, etc. When you, you know, when you think of um, when you dip your finger in like, say, I don't know if you guys use this, but um, like with a little stamp sponge thing and if you dip your fingerprint in that and then you press it, it there's like a ink fingerprint there. Another one that you guys I think might be more familiar with would be if you take your pencil and um, like draw a lot and then use your finger and smudge it. Oh, did I say finger paint? I'm so sorry. Yeah, if you take your finger and smudge it and then press it on another area of the paper, then you can, oh, that's also a patent fingerprint. Those are very visible. Um, those are what I would think, the first thing I would think of when I see fingerprint. And then lastly, there's plastic <laughs> fingerprints. And these are when you press your finger in like Play-Doh, wax, and anything. Like, okay, so one pretty funny uh, thing with, oh, well, that like, when you see your fingerprint with your naked eye, do you see it on your hand or is it when you press it on glass? Because sometimes if you shine your light, like specifically you can see see a latent fingerprint, but it's not very clear. Yeah, yeah, you can see it on your fingerprint, but like you can see your fingerprint on your finger. And there's this pretty, uh, there's this story, like it's a real crime about yeah okay okay yeah sorry about that um for plastic indentations left by for plastic fingerprints you there's a pretty funny story basically there was this guy and he went to walmart to he went to walmart to steal a bunch of electronics and what he did was when he tried to block at the sirens he used play-doh and he kind of molded it to the sirens. And for a pretty long time, they could never find him because they, he, well, he also did it on the cameras, I'm pretty sure. And when they finally found him, it was because he left his fingerprints in that Play-Doh. So they saw his fingerprint, they used it and they identified him. Okay, so now there's different ways to collect fingerprints. So there's, First, there's latent fingerprints. We talked about that back there. And these are done with dusting with your powders or with chemical developers. And you decide whether to use a powder or a chemical developer depending on the type of surface that it's like, yeah, that you, your fingerprint has been left on. So for hard surfaces, you would dust with a powder like black granular aluminum flake, black magnetic. And you can see there's a person using a brush and they have a powder and they're dusting it and you can see the little 
fingerprints. And the, these hard surfaces, basically they're glass, plastic, resin, anything hard that you can think of that doesn't, it's not porous. I mean, you guys know what porous means, right? Okay. So basically what porous means is there's like a lot of like little holes in it. Um, I would say also like it has somewhere where if you pour a liquid on top, it would seep in through it. Oh, okay. yeah, spongy basically. Um, yeah, spongy. Basically, what I would think of to know whether it's hard or porous would be take a little bit like water and spill it on it. If it soaks into the sor surface, it is a por porous surface. If it just stays on top, then it is a hard surface. And then for porous surfaces, these are things like paper and wood. And like I said before, imagine spilling your like some kind of some kinds of wood, uh, like imagine spilling some uh, ink onto wood and it would just go right in. Um, so these use chemical developers such as DFO or 1,8 diazofluoride 9,1. You guys don't really have to know it, just know it as DFO or an anhydrin, which uh, anhydrin, which this is pretty cool, but. It reacts with the amino acids left by the fingerprint. So that's like an amino acid is part of an amino acid is basically it's part of a protein. You guys know what a protein is, right? Yeah, OK. So it reacts with part of that protein left by the fingerprint because you when you leave Latin fingerprints, those are those are they can they're like parts of i don't know, like bodily fluid um and it turns a color called rumon's purple and right here this is that color and this is a fingerprint uh that had been like collected using anhydrin and then next there's patent and these are pretty simple they're usually taken with pictures but um, and some kind of times you can add like some chemicals, dyes. It's not usually necessary, but if you need to, then you can do it. And when forensic scientists go and look at these fingerprints, they will sometimes go and adjust the parts of like the, just the photo with like, like the temperature, the contrast, that stuff to see the fingerprints better. And lastly, there's plastic fingerprints, and this one is the one about um, the guy who went to Walmart. And these are collected by pouring sometimes silicone rubber, metal alloy, or plaster over the fingerprints. And uh, they, you can kind of see it's like a mold. Also, uh, somebody typed you, like before I go to the next slide, somebody, yeah. Yeah, I guess plaster of Paris could work. That's um so somebody typed you into the question the Q and A. Um, I don't really know how to answer that, so I'm just gonna dismiss it. If you guys if if you wanna like elaborate on that, then just type it again into the Q and A. Okay, now we have three more practice problems, just type it in the chat when you figure it out. And once I get like a specific number of answers for each question, then I'll move on. Oh, also, um, if you could just put like the number before your answer.
Okay, um, I'm just gonna let the last person who, um, who put their answer in finish. And then we'll move on. Oh, wait a second, wrong slide. Yeah, okay, most of you guys were correct. Um, the first one is Latin, as you can see there, this would be a hard surface and they're using a brush to brush a powder over it to see the fingerprints. And then the second one, yes, a moldable surface such as clay that is a that is a plastic fingerprint. And number three, which fingerprints are collected by photography? These are patent fingerprints. Yeah, that was correct. Also, uh, just a question. Do you guys have access to the Google Drive? Okay, so um no, like the Google Google folder, like the, uh, I'm pretty sure, so I saw some, okay, I think I saw some of you guys added to it, but let me, I'm gonna, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure you, most of you guys have a Google account, but like, do you guys have the forensics folder? Okay, so, I mean, I saw, some a lot of I saw a lot of people who had it, but let me uh let me change okay here um one second okay here that's the link can you guys access it okay good so over here yeah. So what you're going to do for homework, I haven't really decided if I, okay, I'm going to say, yeah, okay. Um, as for homework, I would just go and put it, like, take a piece of notebook paper or any kind of paper, write down the question um, number and write the answer. You guys don't have to, like, copy down the question or anything. Just write down the answer, and I think you guys can see my email uh in the google drive um and it's just Ming zoo it's like a black and white picture can you guys see that like uh, my email okay well can you guys see the little like uh person icon at the very top so it's it's like it's probably going to say like shared with me forensics week one and after that there's like a little person yeah click on that and then i think you guys can see my name just like search for it and oh it doesn't show me huh, okay uh yeah here's my email yeah those are that's my email just I guess email me if you guys have any questions about the homework and once you're done if you want to it would be best for you to just email me your um email me the your picture yeah yeah just email it to me it doesn't have to be part of any specific email you guys could just like go and yeah submit it to me through your email just uh for the subject just i guess put like homework forensics homework and just send it to me it's, like scan it, take a picture, any of that works. Also, don't, I don't know, I don't think you guys have access to editing the um, the Google Doc, but if you do, don't edit it. Okay. Yeah, just submit it to me through your email. Um, through, sorry, submit it to me through, the e through email. And if you have any other questions, um, it, I, I say it would be best to do the homework, but if you don't have any time, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like required. Yeah, you can do that. If you can also make a copy, just don't do anything to the original. Although um, I didn't really leave that much space when creating it uh, for, I didn't leave much space for creating 
for writing down, but I guess you guys can do that or and copy link. Anything works, just send it to me if you can. And I think that's it. I have like three minutes, um, th like thank you. Um, and I have three minutes left. I like ended a little bit early. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. So I'm gonna stop sharing.